So, Kate, an Israeli official telling me in just the last couple of minutes that Israel's war cabinet will meet tonight. It is 10 o'clock here, local time. So, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his most senior ministers, will huddle late in this Israeli evening to potentially give a response to this Hamas proposal. Now, we basically have here, Kate Nellison, two different agreements, one that Israel has signed off on, one that Hamas has signed off on. We do not know at this point the scale of the discrepancy between the two. If they are small differences, then maybe there are quick fixes here and the documents can be reconciled. If there are major differences, then potentially there is a lot more negotiating to go. In terms of our understanding of what Hamas has signed off to, this is a three-phase deal, according to sources, each phase lasting around 42 days each. We expect Hamas in that first phase to release 33 hostages from the so-called humanitarian category. So that is women, it's children, it's the elderly, it's people with serious medical conditions. In return, we're expecting Israel to release 33 Palestinian prisoners for every Israeli hostage. So that gets you to over a thousand Palestinians in exchange for those 33 hostages. We do not know whether Israel has signed off to all of those terms, to some of those terms. We don't know if there are other discrepancies. One of the big sticking points has been whether this is a negotiation leading to a temporary pause in the fighting, which is what Israel wants, or a permanent end to the war, which is what Hamas wants. But these are critical hours ahead to see if these two documents can be reconciled and if a deal can be reached. Guys. You know, Raf, earlier today I was seeing there were some reports in Israeli media of families who believe their loved ones are still being held hostage inside of Gaza, protesting shutting down part of a highway in Tel Aviv, saying that the Israeli government needs to do more to get their loved ones out right now. Over 30,000 people inside of Gaza have reportedly been killed since this war began. And there's all this talk about what happens next in Rafah. Looking at the situation right now, do we know if the Israeli Defense Forces plan to continue with the ground invasion in Rafa. So, Ellison, early this morning, the IDF started dropping leaflets over eastern Rafa with a stark message to the Palestinian civilians there, get out. Israel is preparing to attack this area. The Israeli military says that the area has about 100,000 Palestinian civilians in it, so it's not all of Rafa, where there are more than a million Palestinian civilians. These people were told to flee to a so-called humanitarian zone. Uh, Israel saying that zone would be safer, but that Israel would still reserve the right to bomb in that area if Hamas operates out of it. At this point, Israeli forces have not crossed over. They have not started moving into Rafah. Israeli officials tell us the timing of an Israeli ground offensive would be determined, one, by when Israel's government actually gives the order to go in, but two, how long it takes to evacuate those Palestinian civilians. And Prime Minister Netanyahu, the Israeli government, have said that if a deal is reached, they are prepared to at least delay an attack on Rafa, although not call it off altogether. Guys. Raf Sanchez, amazing reporting. Thank you, as always. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.